all welcome back today we will be continuing our lecture regarding the aerospace propulsion myself i am say sai krishna from the department of aeronautical engineering from in the institute of aeronautical engineering so now we will be continuing with our next topic that are liquid propellant rocket motors previously what you said regarding the solid rocket propellant motors their characteristics what are the types of burners what are the type of injectors in what way the aerosol burning takes place all this we have covered under the solid rocket propellant motors now coming to your liquid rocket propellant motors first we will understand the basic configuration on which it is being built now a liquid rocket propellant engine system right is a complete system that comprises of combustion chamber nozzle propellant tanks and together with the means to deliver the propellants into the combustion chamber like uh, pumps or valves etc all the propellant is fed to the combustion chamber by static pressure in the tanks right the high pressure gas is introduced into the tank or is generated by evaporation of propellant and this forces the fuel as well as oxidizer into the combustion chamber right we will get a small idea regarding this if this is my tank and this is my exit through which i want to take my fuel out now whenever i i will be filling my liquid propellant means the propellant is in a form of liquid state right right now based on plumbing if the output wall or output way is nearer what we have shown here then it is very good the liquid will be flowing through under the force of gravity right under the force of gravity towards the combustion chamber now in case there is no gravity what happens during that time then you will be using small physics right a physics behind the self evaporation of the propellant or introducing an another gas particularly an inert gas it can be a helium or argon right to pressurize the tanks right to pressurize the tanks in order to push your propellant towards your exit right two cases one either by using an inert gas as a media to push your gas out outward towards the exit now what happens during this this is possible whether in the absence of gravity also so it not necessary that every time the tank is supposed to be on the ground it can be in space also then also the phenomenon is work, working like by introduction of my these gases or what will be the inert gases or pressurizing the tank with already filled propellant right for example a kerosene or liquid hydrogen they tend to evaporate faster forming from gases to sorry liquid to gases form so that creates itself the own pressure to push the liquid state of the propellant towards the exit then towards your combustion chamber now it is difficult to deliver a high flow rate at high pressure using a static tank pressure alone so this system is limited to low thrust engines and for vehicular with upper stages only further there is a penalty that is because the tanks need to have a strong walls to resist the high static pressure and this reduces the overall mass ratio the majority of larger liquid propellant engine systems use some kind of turbo pumps to deliver the propellants to the combustion chamber now what are the turbo pumps a simple pump what is the pump first of all it pulls or it pushes the liquid from lower region to upper region or vice versa based on what we kind of use now turbo pumps use turbo propellers or turbines to be precise to propel my liquid out of the tank as well as to push inside the combustion chamber the most common makes use of hot gases that are being generated by burning some part of the propellant to drive the turbine right whereas high combustion chamber temperature is needed for higher thrust as well as the cooling is also one of the important consideration that has to be considered to avoid thermal degradation of the combustion chamber as well as the nozzle 
means thermal breakup. So let's say for example the material is not supposed to reach its melting point during in operation because as it reaches as the material melts the gases that we are redirecting through the nozzle as well as the combustion chamber they will not maintain the required pressure that is necessary for my actual thrust that is being needed for the vehicle and for design of combustion chambers as well as nozzles this has to be taken into account and in addition safe ignition as well as the smooth burning of propellant is vital to correct the performance of a rocket engine so it's a figure that we will be seeing to understand how a liquid propellant engine works right first of all we will be having a fuel tank next an oxidizer tank the fuel tank will contain the fuel and the oxidizer oxidant tank will contain the oxidizer right the volume for these two will be based on the stoichiometric ratio or the burning ratio that we successfully create right based on the combination that we create now these will there will be a separate fuel lines to take it out take the fuel as well as the propellant out now we are using a set of pump particularly turbo pump to drive or to push the propellant out of the tank towards a combustion chamber right now how does this particular pump works this particular pump works by sending out through a turbine but in this turbine runs on a gas generator and how does the gas is being formed some part of your my oxidizer as well as fuel is taken away from the main line and burnt in my gas generator right in my small combustion chamber with low pressures low volumes everything at minimal volumes that creates a small jet of thrust or a jet of gases that is being passed on to my turbine to drive other two pumps coaxially now as the pumps rotate they push the propellant towards the combustion chamber which again in turn burns the propellants that are coming out to let's say oxidizer as the fuel then the combustion gas combustor gases are expanded onto your nozzle now coming to your major part there is the combustion chamber as well as the nozzle which form the main part of the engine wherein the thrust is actually developed the combustion chamber comprises the injector through which the propellant center as well as the vaporization mixing and the combustion zones and the restriction leading to the nozzle that is my throat and the throat is properly a part of nozzle and the combustion chamber has to be designed so that the propellants vaporize and mix efficiently so that the combustion is smooth it must also withstand the high temperature and pressure of combustion and in some cases cooling of combustion walls arrange the combustion chamber joins smoothly onto its inner surface of the nozzle and the restriction in the combustion chamber and the nozzle together form a contraction to the expansion or in other terms day level nozzle the day level nozzle that we have discussed earlier in our classes related to your module 1 as well as module 2 now the shape that we have defined earlier is defined by particularly thermodynamic as well as the fluid flow laws together with the design requirements next we will see what do you mean by injector what do you mean by injector injector is nothing but that injects right that pushes your fuel inside the combustion chamber the fuel that is coming from the turbo pumps is sent towards your combustion chamber and injected through your injectors now what are the basic three functions that it supposed to fulfill is first it should ensure that the fuel and oxidizer that is entering into the combustion chamber are in fine spray so that the evaporation is fast next it should also enable rapid mixing of fuel as well as the oxidizer either in liquid or gaseous phase next it should deliver the propellants to the chamber at high pressure and high flow rate this high pressure and high flow rate will enable us to evaporate the propellants faster based on the evaporant there will be sufficient mixture between the liquid as well as the gaseous phase phase then 
it would be able to burn more efficiently. Now, a figure that is being shown this. It shows injection as well as combustion of liquid as well as oxidized liquid fuel or oxidizers inside a combustion chamber. Right? What happens? The fuel and oxidizer will be coming from a turbo pump. Right? They will be through the injector, they will be sent into the combustion chamber, the whole region, where first as soon as the liquid oxidizer and fuel mix, they tend to evaporate, means evaporate themselves in the form of liquid to gaseous phase. Some few combinations of propellant might and few combinations of propellants might not. So, in both possible phases, till whatever the extent the vaporization can happen, it will happen. Later on, a proper region is left out for mixing of your liquid fuel as well as oxidizer. Then, it will the fuel the mixture will be combusted and sent towards my <coughs> throat. The specific injector design that has to be taken account with the nature of propellants and for cryogenic propellants such as liquid oxygen as well as liquid hydrogen, evaporation into gases force gases phase is necessary before ignition as well as the combustion. And in this case. A fine spray of each component is needed. The spray that breaks up all the small droplets which evaporate and mixing then occurs between your parallel streams of oxygen as well as my hydrogen. For hypogolic or self-ignited propellants such as nitrogen tetroxide or UDMH, these are the two components which require re react as liquids at room temperature and should come in contact early and Impinging spray or jets of two liquids are arranged. In some cases, pre-mixing of propellants in the liquid form is needed in order to ensure the proper mixing of propellant and oxidizer. Here, the swirl injector is used in which the propellants are introduced together into a mixing tube. They enter the combustion chamber, pre-mix and are exposed to the heat of the combustion. And in all the cases, the heat of the gases that are undergoing combustion is used to evaporate the previous propellant droplets that are coming onto for the combustion chamber. The heat is transferred to the droplets by the radiation as well as the conduction through the gases. Sorry, it's not supposed to be conduction, it's supposed to be convection. Right? The propellant passing through the combustion chamber has the low velocity and does not speed up until it reaches the nozzle, particularly throat. The requirement for a fine spray that is together with a high flow rate is contradictory and can be realized only by making up the injector of many hundreds of separate fine orifices and a good mixing requires the adjacent jets consist of fuel as well as the oxidizer. Thus, the hundred of hundreds of orifices have to be fed by complex plumbing and with piping for two components that are interwoven together. The design of injector is a major issue for combustion chamber design. Let us understand what are the types of injectors. The simplest type of injector is rather just like a shower head except the adjacent holes inject fuel and oxidant so that the propellants can mix. The improved mixing can be achieved with the use of a coaxial injector. Each orifice has the fuel injected through an annular aperture which surrounds the circular oxidant ap aperture and this is repeated many times to cover area of the injector. Now this is an example for your coaxial injector. What happens in this? There are separate orifices particularly in this circular form. Coaxial orifices, so which will be sending my fuel as well as the oxidizer coaxially. For example, through the center, through the center, I will be sending my fuel, right, whereas from the annular spacing, I will be sending my oxidizer, right, 
and multiples of these are aligned in such a way that it covers the entire region of my combustion chamber. Now, what happens during this? Basically, the oxidizer that is coming out will get mixed up with my core stream of my fuel. Right? Now, what is the common region? It basically ensures core mixing of propellants right as well as my other side the oxygen that is available excess at the side will ensure my secondary combustion right after the core mixing the oxygen excess oxygen is available for my secondary combustion of the same products Continuing the same, this one will be my a parallel type of injector where there will be, I mean we will be placing fuel as well as oxidizer in the series right one after the other. Let's say for example, the dotted part in this magus, I am just darkening it to understand as fuel and these as my propellant. Right now, what do these do? Basically, they tend to mix right after, and a proper mixture, particularly the proper mix of propellants, do happen based on the spacing, right, and the proportion to your fuel injectors to the uh, fuel to the oxidizer injectors, as well as the pressure and mass flow rate at which the fuels as well as oxidizers are coming inside my combustion chamber. The, dis the whatever the injectors we have discussed earlier will be used as the reactant vapor phase. Now coming from fine sprays quickly from the which form tiny droplets and evaporate quickly. The impinging injector is shown in two forms particularly in the figure that we are discussing further. The first is designed to make sure that the propellants mix as early as possible right while in liquid phase then and is useful for hypergolic propellant combinations whereas the second form where the jets of same propellant impinge on one another and this is use, useful where fine holes are not suitable and the cross section of jets can be larger while the impinging streams can cause jets to break up into droplets. The injector can be located across the back of the combustion chamber which is uh, will be as indicated in the figure and it can be located around a cylindrical wall of the rear end of the combustion chamber. The choice depends on convenience of plumbing as well as the location of igniter where are being used. In a complete rocket system, in a complete rocket system, before my nozzle part, particularly combustion chamber, there will be sufficient plumbing, particularly to create fail safes as well as to create fail safes as well as to push the liquid from my turbo pumps towards the combustion chamber in various forms. So, based on the convenience of plumbing as well as the igniter, we will be using a particular set as well as particular set of impinger of the combustion chamber. These are the two types right now impinging jet for an unlike program particularly for hypergolic hypergolic propellants. What happens for this basically the fuel as well as the oxidizer will be pushed through my in liquid form. As on for liquid form, they tend to mix as well as react faster. Particularly, let's say if we are considering for hypergolic propellants, particularly nitros, nitrocellulose and UMDH. Right? If you are considering for these two kinds of propellants, then 
the mixing of them in liquid phase will create enough reaction sufficient time to burn themselves which starts the combustion for the same now what happens if the same thing happens for any unlike or like propellants at the time they tend to mix right what happens first we will be converting my oxygen as well as the fuel in mixing phase particular self engine forming a gaseous phase then we will be using them for burning right secure and positive ignition of the engine is essential in both for the safety as well as the controllability the majority of the engines that are used only once during the mission but the ability to restart is vital and particularly to the manned missions and contributes greatly to the flexibility of modern launch vehicles a typical requirement is to restart the upper stage engine after a suborbital course phase which enables to correct a perigee of a transfer orbit that is to be selected and the restart capability is therefore becoming more and more common requirement for any liquid propellant propellant rocket engines particularly for single use engines it includes all the solid propellant engines starting is usually accomplished by means of a pyrotechnic device as we have discussed earlier and what is meant by pyrotechnic device a device that is being set off by means of electric current which heats a wire set in a pyrotechnic material particularly an explosive material the material ignites and a shower of sparks as well as hot gas from the chemical reaction will ignite the gaseous and the solid propellant mixture and the pyrotechnic igniters are safe as well as reliable but they have redundant electrical heaters and connections and a similar devices have a long history of single use actuators for many applications in space for this reason they are often preferred method for starting the rockets but they are clearly one shot devices and cannot be used for restarting a rocket engine other form is an electrical spark igniter analogous to a spark plug which is generally used to ignite my liquid hydrogen as well as my liquid oxygen engines when which which in principle provides a possibility of restart right as soon as we like we can just switch on my electrical device which has a continuous spark for continuous ignition whenever i don't want my engine to be started or stop i'll just shut it off the electrical power supply to the same igniter so that whenever although you are continuously pumping your propellant in it will not burn right however there is small difficulty in this that is it releases releases small energy than a pyrotechnic device and also there is a possibility of fouling during the first period of operation in the engine which may then put the restart at risk what is by fouling for example right consider this as a small example for a spark plug in any bike whatever you can find what happens during this we will be giving one side of correction for our node as well as cathode now during this whenever we, we are switching on there will be a formation of spark in this area right now coming to your come similar to your ic engine as well as other forms what happens you will be right you will be putting your igniter particularly the electric spark plug directly in contact with the mixture of fuel fuel particularly gasoline as well as air in case of your two wheeler while coming for your rocket engine that will be in direct contact with the mixture of liquid oxygen as well as propellant now for the first period of operation what happens as it's in direct contact few drops right few drops of your deposits of the same particularly the propellants will get on to my space in between right space in between so what happens during this during my first set of operation it might work fine but later on as soon as i switch it off and switch it on over a period of time they might right the propellants that are on the doing at the space which they might block the capability of the spark plug to reignite the propellant mixture at that time we will be 
at risk right so much design effort has to be put into your reusable igniters and this will continue as a reset capability becomes more desirable for a single use the space shuttle main, main engine that is SSME main engine has electric ignition for both of the main combustion chambers and for turbo pump gas generators in this case the spark is continuous for a period of during which the igniter is switched on and the system is contained in a small tube which forms part of the injector the gas is hydrogen as well as oxygen in the tube ignited at first and then the flame spread rest of the combustion chamber and by confining the initial gas volume in that particular tube the risk of the flame being quenched by a large volume of cool gas is reduced this is sufficient to heat the flame and once established in the tube and to prevent the quenching for a secure reset capability on manned missions hypergolic propellants must be used these have a property that they ignite on mixing and st so starting the engine is simply a matter of starting the flow of propellants into the combustion chamber this process is used for all man flight critical engines right in order to deorbit right safely eject etc right these are all these are one of few critical processes that are process where the use of hypergolic propellants are utmost required now continuing the same for the next class we will be covering what are the methods or in what way I mean particularly in section or in brief we will be discussing regarding the what way we will be completing particularly we will be pushing the propellant from the tank towards my combustion chamber right for that we will see you in the next class thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates